G'day. I know for sure I'm going to get asked how you should clean one of these new Firmzillas. Now these ones, as I mentioned in my other video, are pretty easy. You can get down in there with your hand. You can clean, you can get your hand into the bottom and clean that, you know, unscrew it and clean that, no worries. Um, so really, you could probably do it without filling it up. The only reason I'm going to fill it up is to make sure it's clean around the valve. And when I say fill it up, I probably won't fill it right up, but I'm going to put some water in and I'm going to try and get my measurement sticker on there. It only has to be rough, you don't need it to. Um, perfect where your measurement sticker goes, well I don't anyway. As long as you know you get a rough idea. So first thing I do, I've heated up, they say this is safe to 50 degrees. I'm going a bit safer, I'm using 45 degrees. Um, just helps the cleaner work a little bit. I will use, the, I've got, what have I got, uh, the Stella Clean or whatever the uh, Kegland version of PBW is. And I will throw, throw some extra sodium bicarbonate in there just because I like it. Now people did ask about this handle hitting the vessel in my other video. I just had, was turning it the wrong way. If you turn it down it doesn't hit. It opens the valve right up. Not that you can see it at the moment. That was just a quick demonstration of the size of the valve more than anything else in the other video. Anyway, let's get to it. So I've got a simple jug that I have weighed because my scientific jug was wrong, <laughs> as I've mentioned in other videos. Um, it was about 200 mil wrong, even though I bought it from a science shop. A funnel's always handy, makes it a little bit easier. I am expecting some leaks probably because I haven't made sure that everything's tight. Well, there's two litres. It's up to about there. You can see that. That's probably enough, really. But I'm going to stick a few more in just to try and get uh, the, uh, the higher level for this sticker before I put it on. Probably six to eight litres. We'll see how much I've warmed up. Oh, and the valve's not open yet. There's eight. With the bottom shut. I'm not sure if that's showing up there. Between the valve and the bottom vessel, it's holding just over a litre. There's 10, that'll do. I'm just going to have to move it now because the table I'm using is actually propped up by my uh, Stella Clean and my Stella Roxy. Showbiz. This is just the sodium bicarbonate. And the Stella Clean. Or your PBWs, because this has got some soap in it to break down any oils. That's, I'm probably putting in way too much, but first time clean. I could have put that in before I'd open up the valve so I could stir it up easier. I'm just going to lift it and shake it because uh, that's what I used to do with my fermentosaurus. This is good. I like how the lid just fits in. I always used to struggle with the seal on the fermentosaurus, especially when you're dry hopping through the top. And this sort of just sort of seals in like that, much easier. Now I haven't really done these up properly or used any tape, so I don't know if we're going if they're going to leak or. I guess we'll soon find out. There is a leak there somewhere. I can hear it. Can't hear it popping out. This amount now. And so this is unnecessary. If you can get in and stir it, old habits die hard, I guess. 
And I also wanted to see, as people mentioned, it looked like there was dents in it. And there was, but there's nothing, no marks where they are, like they're not heavy dents. And nothing I've worried about. It seems a lot, um, even though it's a lot thicker than the Fermentosaurus, it seems more flexible, which sounds weird, but it is. Alright, so I've tangled up me wine a bit. And the good thing about having a connector that accepts gas and beer. Uh, it's good for fermenting too, although that's uncoiled itself. You can force gas down your beer line if you think it's blocked. Or if it was like in a knot like I thought it was then. Without having to change your quick disconnect on your gas bottle, you know what I mean? To change it to a beer line one. But you don't have to with this. Well, I can't see any leaks. So I'm going to put some pressure on it. Gas seems to be set at about 10 psi or 12 psi. Must have been when I was carbon my last beer. As I said, you can put it through the beer line if you thought it was blocked. Which sometimes after a ferment, I think, oh, what if it's got a bit of yeast in there or something? Uh, and you want to take a reading and you don't want to get to get stuck in your um, poppet or anything. So um, before I used to sort of force a bit of gas down. So it's much easier with this. You don't have to worry. So then that clears your beer line. Make sure your beer line's clean. I mean, you don't really want to do that during the ferment because you will stir it up. Um, I mean, it wouldn't matter during the ferment because it's only CO2. But if you were just about to keg it and you had a bit of junk in the bottom, that would probably stir it up a bit. You could turn the gas down a lot lower as well. And on the gas line, well, there, there we go. We've got 12 PSI roundabouts in there now. Can't see any leaks. I'll take the gas off. That's a good way to check the leaks up the top too. Just leave it. And if you know if you lose a lot of pressure, then you know you got a leak. Some of that will absorb into the water. You shouldn't be mixing it up like this. <laughs> but anyway. Don't seem to have any leaks out of there. Good. Another thing I like to do to make sure it's clean in your pickup line, is just use an old beer line, and once you're under pressure, just run some of that cleaner up through it. And I'll leave that sit for a while, and I'll usually come back in 10 minutes or something, five minutes, just run a little bit more through, just to make sure the whole inside of that um, pickup tube is clean. The other thing I'll do every now and then is come and turn the valve handle just to make sure the cleaner, it helps to be under pressure too, to make sure it gets into all the nooks and crannies. Turn it around, make sure that cleaner gets in everything. So what I'll do once this is clean, you know, I'll come out every now and then as I just said, change the valve, move the valve around, move things around, run a little bit more cleaner through the line. I'll probably let the gas out, get my hand in there, give it a big rub around the top here, make sure it's all clean. The old fermentosaurus I used to turn upside down and leave it upside down for a while. It's a bit of a pain in the ass to do. So you don't need to do that with this one because you can get your hand in there. That's it, give it a rinse with the hose. And then I do the same thing with star sand. Not so much star sand, but I'll put star sand in it. I'll put a little bit of pressure on it. I'll run it through the hose, same sort of thing, you know. Put it in underneath, use the handle a few times so the star scene gets into all the different places. Then you empty it out and you're ready to go. As I said earlier, all these other bits are easy to wash. You can get, they take all this off and soak it all if you wanted to separately. The bottom, the little caps, however you usually soak your poppets, that's all fine to do. There's, I know there's some people that like to totally dismantle everything. Um, the valve at the bottom, that's up to you. 
I know there's been many, many times I haven't done that with the Fermentosaurus and everything's been fine. That's up to you. If I ever had an infection or something like that, of course, I'd, I'd definitely do it then. But uh, I treat my fermenters fairly nicely most of the time, so I'm not too worried about it. Something to remember for new users, if you're under any pressure, doesn't matter if it's only a little bit, release it before you go to unscrew the bottom jar, because it will make a mess. <laughs> As you can imagine, it's all under pressure. It's also something to remember, actually during the ferment, if you're fermenting under pressure, say a lot of pressure, and you've closed off your valve and you want to unscrew the bottom, that uh, liquid in the bottom is under that pressure, so it's going to make a mess. Uh, it usually foams up everywhere. You might get a bit of a spurt in the spray. Not that I've ever done that. I did do a cleaning once, and I was disappointed I didn't have the video on, because it was full of hops, the bottom jar, and as I unscrewed it, I was got covered in hops, and I'd never had the camera running. So that's about it. Remember, under 50 degrees, water. Don't use really harsh chemicals on it. Even star sand. Don't put the star sand in undiluted and then put water in. I can show you why. There was someone in one of the Facebook groups and they had a Fermentosaurus and there was all these white marks on the black fitting at the bottom. And he's saying, oh, you know, there's something wrong with it. I can't wash it off. I can't wash it off. I don't remember his name and he probably doesn't want to be mentioned anyway. And then I just had a quick thought and I went, did you put star sand in there undiluted? And he said, oh, yeah, I may have. Well, star sand, as much as everyone says it's safe, when it's undiluted, it's a pretty horrible thing. And this is my bottle washer. And I use it for storing when I'm not using it. I just throw in my little syringe I use to measure out my star seam. That's what it's done to that plastic. All those little bits is where the end of the syringe is, is sat. And you can't wash it off. It eats into it. And that's the same with all of these phosphoric sanitizers, even the Stella sands. Just be careful when it's undiluted. If I remember, I'll put a link down the bottom for Star Sand and the Angry Wife video I did well, several years ago now where it uh, ate into the surface of our kitchen bench from the same thing, just putting down the little syringe I use okay, that's about it empty this out after a while rinse it, Star Sand, ready to go I didn't put the sticker on so what I'll do later, lucky I kept that water I'll put that back in, I know there's 10 litres in there and I'll whack the sticker on The sticker can be a pain because you've got to remember to go underneath the bar. Actually, this will probably balance on the floor on this uh, collection jar. I don't know how level this table is. Oh, it's pretty close. 0.3 of a degree off. There's certain things to sort of remember. If you're going to have put it in your fridge and you want to see your level and you want to have access to your handle, it's good to have them sort of in a roughly the same spot. This has actually got a marker on it saying make that level with the seam near the valve, which is about there. Now that's close-ish. Was it down there? Right down there. No, it should be about, if that's 10 litres. Yeah, that's that's pretty close what they say. You probably can't quite see it. It's probably two or three mil off. Try not to stretch it, of course. I'm just going to line. Bugger. I'm going to line that. Bugger. I'm going to line that up to about where my 10 litres says 10 litres. Try and keep it straight. There we go. That is close enough for me. I've got one kink in it. You might think the levels aren't that important. They're handy when I fill my keg. I don't have to weigh the keg when I'm filling it. I can just go, all right, we're at 20. 
I want 18 litres in my keg, we'll go down to, you know, 4 litres or whatever it is. 2 litres. <laughs> That's good that balances like that. You can nearly put that in your fridge and save some space. Oh, I wouldn't do that though. That's pretty close. Spot on, that was a fluke. Oh, and you can see that 27 is up to there, so I wouldn't be fermenting 27 in it. You could probably comfortably, if you're using firm cap and things like that, get away with 25. And there are gallons there for the people watching in the US. I did think of something else. As you saw today, everything was hand tightened. I haven't done anything up with tools. And so they've all handled this 12 PSI without leaking at all. It's up to you whether you nudge them up a little bit. But if you're going to nudge them up with a spanner or something, just only do it a little bit more than what you've done by hand, because it's usually just not needed. And you don't want to strip any threads. And all these methods are my methods. I don't work for Kegland, I don't work for anybody. Um, so they might be different from what it says in the instructions. They might be different from the way you do it. But this is just the way I do things. So after I'd let it soak for a while yesterday, I went inside to relax and I went, people are going to ask how to unscrew the bottom. I wasn't going to worry about it. I did see a tiny little bit of the soap solution get behind the rubber there at the bottom. So I thought it might be good to know how to take it apart for cleaning once you, if you want to get right into it. Now, it was together tight. So the dump valve should come off in the normal direction. I can't get it undone. <laughs> this piece here is a regular thread. This piece here is a reverse thread. So that's like the right hand thread or left hand thread, whatever you want to call it. So I tried holding onto this and using this and it was just, it was too tight. I couldn't get a good grip on it. I tried using a clamp on the knurled piece and this on the bottom piece and I still couldn't get it undone. A bit later on I thought about things I could have done. I probably could have got a towel around the knurled bit and that would have gripped and I probably could have got a better grip on it and help. That would have helped if I had had another pair of hands, someone to help me. But I didn't. And here's a disclaimer. Don't try this at home unless you really have to. When what I've, I did contact Kegland and he said he was going to do a video maybe about how to undo it, how they do it properly. I was frustrated. And what does any frustrated fitter do? They get a persuader. <laughs> now, that's a rubber mallet. I'll just say again, you probably shouldn't do this. So what I did, I just gave the little handle area there, just a gentle tap, and it was enough that I felt it shift, and then I could undo it. So this top bit's a normal thread, so it will screw to the left, like that. And you probably shouldn't be using the container. You can use this thing. On there. And undo it like that. Now it's loose. I can just undo it. Like that. Remember there is seals that you need to make sure are in place when you put it back together. Looks like this one's just come out a little bit. There's a seal around there top there. This piece is reverse thread, so to undo it, you're turning it like you'd be doing another bolt up. Just like that. Then that bit pops out. I haven't got the lid off at the moment, I'm not going to let it drop through. But now we're totally apart. So that's easy to take apart and clean if you need to. So that's the piece there. It has a seal around here that you need. And this bit's another rubber seal. 
at the top. Uh, to get this out of the fermenter, I did have to peel the seal back a bit. It was just a bit wide. But I'll put it back in the same way. I'll just push that back. Get it through the hole. Hold that seal back. Drop it through. Grab a hold of it. Make sure your rubber seal's on there again. I'll just mention that again. This left hand thread, remember, so it's like you'd be undoing a normal nut. And only do it hand tight. Make sure your seal's in place. And the screw's on the right way. You probably shouldn't use this again. Can you feel it nudge up? And just that hand tight will be enough. You can always double check it with some pressure and some sanitizer in it before you use it. Make sure you haven't got any leaks. I'll just mention once again, this is probably not the best method, but it worked for me. Don't come back to me if you break it. <laughs> I have used the hammer before to get the lid off the Fermentosaurus when I had a broken hand. I was one hand and I went, what am I going to do? Hammer! And it came off. But I wouldn't suggest you do that. After I put some pressure on it, I did have a small leak. I did find it. just had to gent tighten it up gently and give it a nudge with this. And it, uh, it stopped the leak. And so that's it. All I'm going to do now is put some star sand in it. Put the top on, swirl it around, pump some star sand through the pickup tube. I just want to mention the video for the competition is coming up. My giveaway um, and the videos for the NIPA. It is school holidays here. I just haven't had time to do everything I needed to do, as well as the videos for this. So thanks for watching. Please like and subscribe. Cheers. That was just bound to happen.